Happy Wisdom Minds, everyone. So, book of the week this week is Designing Your Life, How to Build a Well-Lived, Joyful Life by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. Now, these two gentlemen set up the Life Design Lab here at Stanford University, where essentially they bring design thinking and prototyping to, essentially, designing your life. And I think it's a fantastic book to go through, especially now at the end of the year, because this is a time of year where we have a little bit more spare time because of the holidays. We can kind of look back at the year and see what we accomplished from a personal and professional standpoint. But more importantly, not only are you happy, but do you feel fulfilled? Now, I love this book because it has a lot of uh, great exercises and, and gives you the tools to really design the ideal life that you want. Now, I'm going to leave you with five specific mindsets that get you started in this book in terms of how do you start designing the life that you want. So, step number one, or mindset number one ra rather, is awareness. Being aware of the kind of life that you have and what does it mean. When you're able to connect three specific dots, you're able to find more meaning and fulfilling, which is your work view. What do you do and what does it mean? your life view in terms of what is the meaning of life and then you the view of you which is who are you and the more you start to connect those three things and have them play off each other you start to feel more fulfillment and the second thing which is something I always advise every person I mentor is a bias towards action it's always great to have ideas but at the end of the day you have to take action and sometimes people get afraid about choosing things but choosing something's better than nothing as long as you're directionally correct you can always change and and end up you know adjusting the course you're not a tree if you want to change and pick yourself up and start over again, you can always do that but choose something the next thing is reframing the idea of reframing is an important piece for designers because essentially you look at a frame and if you reframe you might illuminate something that may not have been there right so questions that you might ask yourself is not specifically can I do this but what do I need to do in order to do this Right? And sometimes when you reframe certain situations, such as if you just, let's say, got laid off your job, instead of saying, I don't have any money, think of it as, now I have the opportunity to go get a better job and maybe do something else to make more money. And the last mindset is radical collaboration. Ideas are not meant to stay in your mind because that's the kind of place that they go to die. Right? They're meant to be out here in the world, engaging and evolving. Right? So get on the phone, reach out to people. When we were young and we wanted to say, live a new life and pursue a certain profession. We reached out and talked to those professionals. So that doesn't change when you become an adult. You can do the same thing now. So reach out and collaborate with people. And the last idea I will leave you with is this concept of the lives that you live. You see, physicists came up with this concept that as we are living life right now, we're in a simulation where there's parallel universes. And this is something that's a theory that's been really talked about quite a lot. There's even a science fiction writer that says the future is already here. It's just distributed unevenly. So what that means is if you have a dream of being, say, a CEO or maybe an entrepreneur or perhaps, I don't know, having a, a novel or something, there's somebody that's living the life that you want today. Reach out and talk to them and then sit down and plan three different lives for yourself for the next 10 years. Life number one is everything goes very well according to plan today. Whatever your job is right now, you stay on that path. Life number two is, let's just say, robots and automation come and whatever you're doing in life number one is no longer needed. Whether, let's just say, it's accounting and there are no more, no more accountants needed. What would you do to make money, right? What would you use as a profession? And then life number three, and this is the most important one, is kind of a crazy idea of, if you had all the money in the world and you didn't care what people thought, what would you do? What would you pursue? So that's the book of the week. I definitely recommend go out and get it. Walk through it. Check the comments below. I actually do have a podcast where I read through the books. Um, and so I summarize some key points from this book because some people, they say they would like to learn and dive a little bit deeper in these topics. So check the comments below for a link to the podcast on the book. And as always, happy Wisdom Wednesday, and I'll see you next week.